recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. The CRISPR stocks are on fire lately. So the big question is, should you invest? Well, I'm not sure if it's right for you, but I definitely think everybody should learn more about the science and the companies and then be able to decide if they want to invest. So that's what I'm going to try and help you do today. CRISPR science and stocks is the, is the theme. Should you learn more? Should you invest? Obviously, I answered the first question in the affirmative, and then we'll, we'll get to the second one. There's so much to talk about here. I want to break this into you know, three different topics where first let's learn about the science, then about some of the players, people who invented it, um, and then the patent battles they're having, and then the companies themselves and a lot of the controversy. We're not going to get to all of this today, uh, but we're going to get to a good chunk of it. I'm going to give you some more resources to follow up, and then we're going to hit it again next week. All right, so... Uh, I have written several reports on CRISPR and gene editing, and uh, one of the most recent ones was from April, April 9th uh, for uh, Zach's Confidential. I called it CRISPR Science and Investing, and um, I referenced a report I wrote last summer, I think it was in uh, June or July, called Gene Editing, How to Invest, where I was just learning about CRISPR, but... I'd already bought one company called Singamo Therapeutics, uh, symbol SGMO, which is a gene editing company. And they specialize in something called zinc finger nuclease. So nuclease means uh, uh, an enzyme that can cleave or cut something. And that theme will come up again because that's what gene editing is all about. It's, uh, they're, they're performing these precise uh, specific, site specific cuts in DNA to uh, either alleviate, uh, to maybe cure a disease or just uh, for a treatment. All right, so uh, Sangamo, we made some good money on, especially as uh, Gilead got involved. Um, and I just started learning about uh, Editas Medicine and CRISPR Therapeutics, uh, two of the companies that we're going to talk about. Uh, my last yellow paragraph down there, I just want to read this for you. Not only do we have two women scientists who co-discovered the essential nature of this genetic breakthrough, CRISPR, uh, only as recently as 2012, we have three newly public companies racing for robust R&D validation and battling over patent rights. So and the three companies are CRISPR Therapeutics, symbol CRSP, uh, Intellia Therapeutics, symbol NTLA, and Editas Medicine, symbol EDIT, E-D-I-T. Um, and what where there's controversy about the science possibly being dangerous or not working. Um, then there's also new science. There's new threats. So there's, there's a, one form of CRISPR, then a new form comes out, and we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. All right, so the basics of the science. Um, I use this paragraph from Wikipedia because I think it sort of introduces it without even talking about CRISPR at first, just about uh, genome editing using... Uh, these nucleases, which are basic, basically molecular scissors, and they help create double-strand breaks in DNA. So, uh, and then then they have a technique to rejoin. So after they cut some DNA, th they can rejoin it. So where did this come from? Did you know was this was this uh, CRISPR science, this gene editing, just invented in a lab? Uh, no, it actually came from nature. And uh, we're gonna so we're gonna take a look at that. Um, I'll get to that slide next, but uh, so uh, what does CRISPR stand for? Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats was the name they gave it. Um, it even goes, it goes back, the science, the discovery actually goes back to 1987 uh, when researchers studying bacterial defense mechanisms uh, saw that, you know, bacteria have a natural defense mechanism against viruses. A virus invades, takes over, uh, the DNA of a bacteria and uses it as a host and, uh, you know, obviously wreaks havoc. Well, bacteria, over billions of years, <laughs> had to learn how to defend themselves against this. And, and so they have certain enzymes they use to be able to cut up the, uh, the invader and turn around and make the virus um, their prey. So uh, one of these proteins that was discovered is called Cas9. Uh, CAS, I believe, is like an abbreviation for CRISPR-associated. Okay, 
So here's a diagram of how CRISPR works. And, you know, it's not going to give you a ton, but it's, it's nice to have a, a visual uh, and a little bit of explanation. Um, this, is, this comes from the MRS Bulletin, which I believe is a material science uh, magazine or resource uh, journal. And uh, so you can see the steps here. The, the Cas9 protein forms a complex with a guide RNA. So RNA acts as a, as a guide here. Um, and you know it, this is just an amazing discovery. And if you don't have a degree in molecular biology, which I don't, then a lot of this stuff is going to be way over our head. So uh, I'm going to give you a, a link to a video that I shot earlier this week where I explain, hey, you know, to be able to invest in biotechs, you don't, you, you, you can't know everything if you don't have a degree in the life sciences. So you have to sort of leverage other people and other resources so that you can know enough. And then the key to investing, as far as I'm concerned, is knowing what the other guy will pay. And uh, my examples are when a big pharma buys a little biotech. So, uh, you know, that's happened for us several times in the past couple of years. Celgene bought a company we owned called uh, Juno, which uh, was involved in the um, immuno-oncology space. Uh, different, not gene editing, just uh, teaching your body's immune system to fight cancer. And uh, we made almost 100% of that stock because of the buyout. So, you know, that's what you always hope for in biotech. So if you know, if you sort of know enough, you read the analysts, who many of whom are PhDs in the life sciences, and then, and then you sort of have an idea of the valuation ranges and get an idea of, of what will Big Pharma pay for some of these companies? Will they pay $2 billion? Will they pay $5 billion? Will they pay $10 billion? Um, and as you compare the peers and then try and pick the pony that's going to, you know, uh, well, maybe you pick three, win, play, show. All right. So, uh, again, just, you know, bacteria has taught us something. It has basically opened a whole new window of discovery because this is not, th th this whole gene editing idea, um, science is, is really in the early stages, and they're going to keep making new discoveries, um, and it's really going to change the future. So that's why I say, even if you're not an investor, as a concerned citizen, you want to learn more about it. Uh, next week, we'll talk more about one of the one of the creators, uh, Dr. Jennifer Doudna, who helped found a CRISPR company, um, and basically, you know, along with uh, the the uh, the French biologist Emmanuel Charpentier, those two women discovered that CRISPR could be used for gene editing. But even uh, Dr. Doudna has spoken out about the dangers, the potential dangers, of gene editing gone wrong or in the wrong hands. All right. Speaking of which, here was the big controversy last week and why the CRISPR stocks went down 10 to 20 percent, but they're bouncing back now. Um, and this, this article, I just uh, clipped a bit here from, this is from Stat. Uh, an excellent publication to keep up on biotech. Uh, Sharon Begley explained that, hey, the, uh, the, uh, the CRISPR companies could be in trouble here because of two reports, one from a Swedish scientific institute and from Novartis. Two separate studies said that uh, the CRISPR editing could actually cause new problems that might encourage cancer. So here's a the, the potential revolutionary cure for cancer could also cause cancer. But hey, what doesn't cause cancer, right? Um, anyway, these fears were quickly seen as overblown, sort of coincidental, and you know that the science will evolve beyond that. So uh, we owned all the CRISPR stocks in one of my portfolios, my healthcare innovators, and uh, CRISPR Therapeutics itself, CRSP, was down as much as 20% at one point. Uh, has has come almost all the way back, um, and that's you know as investors see that that was that really was a buying opportunity in all the stocks. All right, so you can pause this video obviously and read this uh, this excerpt from from Stat by Sharon Begley. Um, but I want to leave you now with two resources because we're not, what we're not going to get into today. We're not going to get into the all the personalities and players behind these companies. You know, there's I, I mentioned. Uh, Dr. Jennifer Doudna and Dr. Emmanuel Charpentier, who are the two women who mainly came up with the collaboration in 2012 that said, hey, CRISPR could be used for gene editing. And then we've had three new public companies since then. 
which they are involved with, along with a gentleman uh, named, uh, he's Chinese, so I'm going to see if I can pronounce his name correctly, Feng Zhang. He's at the MIT Broad Institute, and th there's, you know, there's exciting stuff going on here, not just in the science, but among these different people, there's patent disputes between all their companies, who owns the patents, um, and there's new discoveries. We're going to talk more about that uh, in a video I do next week. So right now, I just want to leave you with two resources. One is the CRISPR video I made earlier this week. It was my top stock pick, and I explained why investors could look at this as an opportunity if they learn more about the science and the companies to buy CRISPR, you know, under 60 bucks. Um, so that video you can find, it was, uh, so June 18th, Monday, June 18th, we filmed that. So you can just go to the Zax.com website and type in the symbol CRSP and see if uh, top stock picks comes up. Um, or, or just search through the article archive for CRSP and you'll find the top stock picks for the week of June 18th. And that video has some, uh, you know, some cool stuff in it. It's about 15 minutes long. The second resource I want to direct you to is my April Zach's Confidential titled CRISPR Science and Investing, where I have more of these slides and more information. You know, you can look, uh, you can see if you can get a copy on the Zach's.com website, or you can call this 800 number, and uh, they'll set you up. So, lots to learn. It's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing process trying to keep up with biotech, especially as new science keeps evolving and potentially becoming, um, what should I say, uh, you know, practical and applicable and, and, you know, saving lives as the FDA says, okay, that'll work. Right now, the, uh, you know, the danger with the CRISPR companies as an investor is that none of them are doing human clinical trials yet. And, and so, you know, ver validated uh, science that has efficacy and safety, which is, you know, the two big things the FDA needs to see, that's years away. So, uh, and anything could happen between that now and then. Who knows? The FDA could, you know, shut the whole thing down and say, no, we're not doing any human clinical trials. So, uh, there's a lot of risk here, a lot to learn, but I think it's exciting because it is a, a big part of the future. And so stick with Cooker and we'll keep talking about it. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen.